الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Oh Allah, we ask you by your by your names and sublimes attributes, by your perfect names and sublime attributes, to forgive us and keep us steady on the straight path and do not misguide us. Oh Allah, we ask you to bring our hearts together. And to bring the Ummah together and to cure the sick of this Ummah and to release the hostages and the Asra of this Ummah and to give victory to the Mujahideen in your sake. Ameen, O oh Allah. Ameen, O oh Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the title, The Story of Five Monkeys. Uh, what, the, what is the story behind those five monkeys? Of course, this is an experiment. Some scientists, they want to have an experiment about animal and human behavior. Of course, as you know, the closest thing to human being, as they think it is the monkey, it has intellect, it thinks, and it acts according to that intellect. They've got a very long ladder. They put lots and lots of bananas on top of that ladder. And they put five monkeys inside this huge cage. And every time a monkey tries to climb up to get the banana, the scientist would splash and, 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 and throw very cold water on the four monkeys in the bottom. And every time a monkey does this, they would spray him with very cold water. So they learned that if a monkey climbs up the ladder, yes, we're going to get hurt. So any monkey that climbs up, they grab him and bring him down. Yes, and if another monkey wanted to do so, they will beat him up. They gather around it and they will beat it up so it doesn't climb up the ladder. And they learned a lesson. That climbing up this ladder, no matter how exciting and good, the banana is, we do not go up this ladder because we are going to get beaten up and to get sprayed with very cold water. And one day the scientists, that, they said, let us take one monkey out and put a new monkey. Yes, let's put a new monkey there and see what this monkey, what, uh, uh, he, would, uh, what he would do and how the rest of the monkeys would behave. Of course, the, the monkey, because he's new, he looked at bananas, yes, go up. Tried to climb up the ladder, pulled them down, beat him up. One time, second time, he knew and learned that I'm not allowed to go up this ladder. But he would not know the reason. He would not know why he's not allowed to climb up the ladder. Even though he can see yani bananas, and they are beautiful bananas, but he cannot go up and get them. Yes, why? Because he get bitten up. Why? He's not allowed to ask why and he does not know why. Then they got another monkey and they put and replaced him with a new one. The second monkey wanted to do the same thing, climb up the ladder. The rest of the monkeys grabbed him down, including that new monkey and beat him up too. And including the first monkey. Then they changed another monkey. Now there are three new monkeys. Every time that monkey, the new one tries to climb up, they bring him down and they will beat him up. 
and they changed all the monkeys and they got five new monkeys. And all of them, they would not allow, yes, any one of them to climb up this ladder. With no reason. Now would that know they would not know why they do not they do that. Why I'm not allowed to khalas. We learn this that you're not allowed to climb up this ladder. And anyone who climbs up the ladder we will beat him up. And as if if you're able to ask these monkeys, as if if you are able to speak to these monkeys, why are you hitting hitting these new monkeys that try to climb up the ladder? That what would the answer be? We have found our forefathers doing the same thing. Without knowing the reason behind it, without knowing why. Another experiment was trialed in India, and still they use it today as a tradition in India. They get the huge big elephant, huge elephant, to keep him under control, Yes, first they would chain him with a thick, big, heavy metal chain to a tree. And he would try to break the chain once and twice and three times. He would bleed and feels the pain. He stops. Then he tries the second day and the third day and the fourth day. Then he learns he's not allowed to break away from this chain. And then they will rope him with a little tiny rope. Khalas, he stopped trying. He would not try to break that rope again. And he learned and became accustomed and hostage to his environment. Same thing, these monkeys, khalas, they become accustomed to their environment. You're not allowed to climb this ladder no matter what. Yes, and this is exactly what the Quran has warned you from. Not to be blind following, not to follow the steps of the forefathers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ If they were said to them, follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent. قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا They would reply and say, we only follow what our forefathers were following. We will not try anything new. That is the reality of mankind. Allah also subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ If it was said to them, when it was said to them, come to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, come to the messenger, قَالُوا حَسْبُنَا مَا وَجَدَنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا It is sufficient for us what we have found our forefathers uh, uh, following. And listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them. أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاؤُهُمْ And if your forefathers لَا يَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا They have no knowledge. وَلَا يَهْتَدُونَ they, they, they never were guided. They had no guidance. You still want to follow them? Yes. This is how we found. How many of the Muslims today? How many of our brothers today? They just become accustomed to their mates and to the gang and to the group. And he act in a way, whatever they do, they control him like a toy. He lives like a, a, a hostage to them and to their whims. He's too scared to break away and meet different people and learn about the guidance. The problem, it's not following the forefathers anymore. The problem today, it's following the mates and the friends and the evil friends. It becomes, this is the trend, dear Habibi. The trend today is to dress in such a way, walk in such a way, talk in such a way, listen to, 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 the, to, to the same style of music, speak in such a way, that if I was to break out of it, I would not know what to do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to follow his order and his command and follow his way. Don't be blindfolded. Don't be hostage to your own environment. Break away. Then break away from that box. Break away from that little tiny rope that you think it's holding you back. It's only a rope. One step and the second you find yourself obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the right environment. 
My brothers and sisters in Islam, the same excuse that was said that we follow our forefathers. It was said to Musa alayhi salatu was salam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا And when Musa came to them with our verses and our miracles, قَالُوا مَا هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُفْتَرَى All this is magic, and you have made this. وَمَا سَمِعْنَا بِهَذَا فِي آبَائِنَا الْأَوَّلِينَ And we never heard our forefathers came with this. And my brother, if you are a da'i to Islam, you always be, you always faced with this. If you call people to the Sunnah, why are you reading the Fatiha on the dead? Why are you doing Mawlid? Why are you twisting and dancing and turning and calling this dhikr? They would say, but you're coming now after 1,400 years to tell us how Islam is. And what is the correct Islam? This is what we found our fathers. We learned that our fathers do this, so we do it. Isn't it the same excuse you hear from your parents? When you tell them, this is the sunnah, and they will say, the sunnah is not to follow the sunnah. Of course, indirectly they say this. When you say to them, this is haram, they will say, you came with a new religion. Where did you come from this? They forgot the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the strangers, about al-nuzza' min al-qaba'il, the few from every tribe. The few from every tribe who come in towards the end to correct the mistakes the people have fallen into. To go back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same excuse, it is repeated also. The same excuse people use today, not to follow Islam. Who are these people with the bead and wear like a garment and dress and whatever, to tell us how we should live our life? Our country is the best country. This is how we live. Don't bring us your Middle Eastern problems. You're not calling them to be Lebanese or to be uh, Iraqis or Syrians or Pakistanis. You tell people come to Islam. But look, we lived for generations like this and we are happy like this. Isn't it the same thing they said to Hud alayhi salam when he called his people, Ya qawmi Allaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. Oh my people, follow, uh, worship Allah. You have no God other than Allah. You have no deity worthy of, uh, of worshipping beside Allah. You know what they replied with? قَالُوا أَجِئْتَ لِنَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ You came to us to tell us to worship one God. وَنَذَرَ مَا كَانَ يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا And we would leave and outcast what our forefathers used to worship. It is the same excuse that is used today. When you call people, come and worship Allah alone. They would say the same thing. But we worship money, we worship cars, we worship women, we worship this, we worship that, we worship television, we worship alcohol, we worship drugs. But you coming to tell us to says there's one God worthy of worship and all our life has to be according to your Quran. What are you crazy? My wife wear a hijab and look like a poor woman like your wife? That is the same excuse repeated. And also inside the Islamic circle, when you dress your wife in a hijab properly, when you grow your beard and follow the sunnah, when you say, I would not mix and mingle, I would separate between women and men in my house. And when I have my house established on the sunnah correctly, I will say to you, what is this new religion you came with? We never heard this before. Our fathers taught us Islam because you learned Islam from your fathers. You did not learn Islam from the right sources. They said the same thing to Salih alayhi salatu was salam. They said, Qalu ya Salih, qad kunta fina marjuwan qabla hadha. They said, O oh Salih, you were a figure and we, have, we had hope in you. You used to work hard. Bring money, yes, 
buying houses through haram, starting businesses from the banks. Now what happened to you? You start to listen to this sheikh and that sheikh and now you're growing your beard. You're changing your business to a different business that doesn't bring you enough money. You don't want to deal with banks. What this new deen you came with? What this new religion you came with? Are you trying to tell us? Are you trying to forbid us, forbid us from worshipping what our forefathers used to worship? And Allah also sent Madian. Madian, he sent to Madian uh, uh, Shu'aib alayhi salatu wassalam. And he told them the same thing. Do not cheat, worship Allah alone. Yes, and he said to them, Inni arakum bi khair. But I see goodness in you. I can see you have some goodness. Because no one is pure evil. The only pure evil is Jahannam wal iyadu billah and shaitan. Yes, no one is really pure evil. They have, there, were, there was some goodness in them. But they still rejected. Qalu ya Shu'aib. They said, oh Shu'aib, your salat orders you to leave what our parents used to worship or to do with our wealth what we like. Shuf subhanallah, the same message reiterated generation after generation. Qalu ya Shu'aib. They said, O oh Shu'aib, your salat that you, you perform orders you to leave and natruka ma ya'budu abauna to leave and abandon what our forefathers used to worship. Or that we cannot do with our money what we like. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this issue of blind following the steps of the forefathers and not to be able to break away from it, it is not something new. It is not something new. People are blindfolded with this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses of the Quran, He said to us, do not be blind. Because blindness is not losing your sight. Blindness is losing, is losing the seeing and the sight of the heart. Because if you lose your eyes and your sight and you become blind, the Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith Al-Qudsi that Allah says, Whomever I take away from him, Habibata, his eyes, and he called them as Habibata. Yani you must beloved things to you are your eyes. Allah called it your eyes, Habibata. Yani your two eyes, this one that you love. I have, and he is patient, and he does not reject the predestination, the qadr of Allah. I have no reward for him other than put him in the highest paradise. So losing, losing the seeing is not a problem, but losing here, that is the problem. Losing what is in your heart. The sight in your heart, that is the problem. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ The eyes are not the ones that they go blind. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ The hearts that are in the, in, in the chest, that's the ones they turn blind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the ones who hear the message of Islam. And... <coughs> They hear the message of Tawheed. And here I'm not only talking about the Kuffar, my brother, because you could be one of them, who come to this center and listen to us and go back to the Haram. Why? Because you're still blind. And listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and how accurate is the description of Allah. وَمِنْهُمْ مَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْكَ And some of these people, some of your constituents, they would look at you. They would just look at the Prophet sallallahu Yes, but they would not believe in him. Do you give guidance to the blind one? And even though they see not. So were able to see and they would look at the Prophet ﷺ. But he couldn't guide them. Because the heart is blinded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا and the example of the one who disbelieved. كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي يَنْعِقُ بِمَا لَيَسْمَعْ إِلَّا دُعَاءً وَنِدَاءً 
the, and the example of those who disbelieve is as that of him who shouts to the flock of the sheep that hears nothing but calls and cries. You see the person who calls the sheep and he calls them to come. What would the sheep do? They just hear voices, but they would not understand it. This is the example of the person who rejects the call of Islam. And as I told you, you could be one of them who hears every week, in week, in week out, you come here and you listen the mashayikh and the du'at asking you to straighten up your life. But you go out without nothing in your head. Why? Because you're still blind. You're still blind. Like the sheep that hears voices and sounds and shouts and cries. But it doesn't follow. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Summun bukmun umyun fahum la ya'qilun. Deaf, dumb and blind, so they do not understand. Yes, my brothers, you they do not understand. Even they can hear the voices. And they can see with their eyes. And they can hear with their ears. But at the same time, Allah called them dumb and deaf and blind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ And this is, the point here is to show you that following the forefathers blindfolds you. And you cannot break away from it. And not listening to the call of Islam and the call of the Sunnah, you are like the blind person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, not alike the blind and the seeing. The blind and the seeing. And what a blindness we're talking about here? The blindness of the heart. Yes, the blind and the seeing, they're not alike. Wala dhulumatu wala nur. And darknesses and light. And listen how accurate is the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it darknesses. Why? Because the path, the paths of, of misguidance are many. One nur and light, not lights. Light, because the light is one. The haq is one. The truth is Islam. It is one light. But darknesses are many. The roads to evil are many. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ And do not follow different paths. Will take you astray. Will take you astray. Follow the one path, the light, the light, the the, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah subhanahu wa taala is light, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is nur come to this earth, a guidance that come to this earth, and the Quran is light, guidance to this earth. Allah subhanahu wa taala ordered our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To make dua, to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him light from in front of him and from behind him and from his right and from his left and from above him and from under him and in his sight. Why? What is the light he's talking about here? Is it the light, the lamp? Is it the light, the sun? Is it the moon? Or the light of guidance that the Prophet would continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he would not be blindfolded and they're not equal, they're not alike, the shade and the heat, and the dead and the living and the dead, they're not equal. Inna Allah yusmi'u man yasha. Listen, Allah makes whomever He likes hear. We all hear the Quran. We all hear the khutab. We all hear the lectures. We all hear the shuyukh shout and scream and call you. وَيْحَكَ amen. Oh, you believe. Follow. Every shaykh and every da'i and every khutbah, it tells you follow. But Allah, if He does not want to make you hear, you can never hear. 
Allah will make whomever He likes He is. And anyone who heard the call of Allah, let him thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Day and night that He guided him. Because if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be here to begin with. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعٍ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ And you cannot make the dead and the ones inside the grave he. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي هَذِهِ أَعْمَى And whomever in this dunya is blind, فَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ أَعْمَى وَأَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا Indeed, he is on the day of judgment, blind also and misguided. And the son of Adam would say, Oh Allah, why did you gather me as blind? Why you did you did gather me blind while I was in the dunya able to see and I was able to and I had sight? The reply would say, Our verses came to you. The light came to you, but you were blind and you did not accept it. And you rejected it. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Islam, following the footsteps of the forefathers, following the footsteps of our friends, and not breaking away from the box we are living in, and from the environment that we are living in, and not taking this first strong step, it lead you to Jahannam wal billah if you do not do so. And I want to narrate to you this story. That is narrated to me by a shaykh and a da'i from Saudi Arabia. And I want you to be patient with me. It's an excellent story. Story of a young boy and his father. To show you the difference between someone who had sight, but he was blind, and someone who was blind, but he had sight. And this man, he wrote it as a letter. To tell us his story and what, had ha what has happened to him. And he said, I just passed 30, yani I was just past my 30s when I had my first son. And I remember that night. I used to stay till the end of the night with my group of friends, hanging out with my friends. And I used to spend the night in idle talk and jokes and mockery and I, will, I used to be the one who make them all of them laugh and giggle and I used to backbite while they used to laugh and I remember one night that we laughed so much because I have the ability and it was a great ability that Allah gave me to be able to change my voice to different voices so I can mock whomever I like. And I was able to imitate anyone that I like. And I used to mock my uh, everyone. And I used to mock my friends. And some of my close friends. And some people used to avoid me fearing that I would mock them. So I used to spend the nights in mockery and jokes and laugh. And he said, one night I remember, I saw a blind man begging on the streets and I mocked him and I made a mockery out of him. And the worse than that, I put my foot in his path that he tripped and fell. And while he was falling, he was mumbling things that I did not understand and didn't really care to understand. And I laughed loudly and I hear my laugh echoing in the market. I went back to my home late as usual. My wife was waiting for me. She was in a very bad state. She said to me in a rambling voice, Rashid, where were you? I said in a mockery, on the moon, I was with my friends as usual. And she looked very tired and sick. And the words were choking in her throat. She said, Rashid, I am very tired. It looks like it is the time that I have to give birth. She was in the labor. And a tear rolled down her cheek. I felt guilty and I felt I had neglected my wife. I was supposed to look after her a bit, especially that she is in her nine months. I took her to the hospital very quickly. I entered the labor room. 
while her labor was very long and hard, I couldn't wait. And there is, I could not wait patiently. I had no patience for her. Especially her labor was difficult. I waited and I waited and I waited until I got tired. So I decided to go home. I left my number with the secretary and with the nurses. And after one hour, they rang me up. They said, glad tidings to you. Your wife gave birth to a boy named Salim. So I hasted to the hospital and I asked about her, about his wife and about the baby. They told me go and speak to the doctor, the head nurse and the doctor that supervised the delivery of your wife. And I shouted, what doctor? I need to see my son. They said first go see the doctor. I entered on the doctor and she welcomed me with a smiling face. And she said to me, reminded me of calamities and reminded me to accept the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she said, your baby is disabled. Your baby is disfigured. His eyes are very ill. He's got illness in his eyes. And maybe, and I think, he is not able to see ever again. Or he would never, ever, never be able to see. He said, I put my hand, head down. And I was trying to push away the chokeness. I was choking. My throat was choking. And I remembered very, quick, very quickly. The man that was begging on the street. The man that I pushed and I laughed at. And I said to myself, as you saw your rape, come out at the end of the day you would find the same repayment. Then I stood a little, I didn't know what to say. I remembered my wife and my son. I thanked the doctor and I moved on to see my wife. My wife, she was not sad. She was a true believer. She believed in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many times they repeatedly would advise me not to mock people. Not to beg by people. And she would always repeat that. In reality, I never used to care. And then, we left the hospital and took Salim with us. To me, to me, I ignored Salim. As if he doesn't exist. At times when he cries, I would run away from the bedroom and I sleep in the living room. My wife, she used to love him so much and care for him. But I... Never loved him, but at the same time I never hated him. Salim started to grow, and started to crawl, and he was crawling in a funny, strange way. And after, when he reached one year, he tried he tried to walk. Then we found out that Salim was limpy, who could not walk properly, and this became very heavy to my soul, and very heavy on me. And after Salim, my wife gave birth to Umar and Khalid, two new sons. The years has passed, and Salim grew and his brothers and his brother grew. I never used to like to stay at home. I always want to be with my friends. In reality, I was like a toy in their hands. They used to play with me whatever they like. Whenever they call me, I used to leave everything and come. But my wife, my righteous wife, she never gave up. She would always talk to me and advise me and try to correct me. And she would always ask Allah so he can guide me. And she would never used to get angry with whatever I do. She was patient with me. But she used to get very upset when she used to see me neglecting Salim. And looking after and caring for his brothers. Salim grew and my worry towards him grew with him. And when my wife asked me, can I enroll him in a disabled school? I said, yes, you can. I do not mind. I didn't feel the years go by. The days were the same. Work, sleep, eating, drink, and staying up all night, mocking in idle talk. And on Friday, I woke up 11 o'clock in the morning. Of course, that time, it was early for him. The day off, of course, in these countries was a Friday. The public holiday was Friday. 
I woke up 11 o'clock, I thought it's too early. But anyway, I was invited to a walima. I got dressed, I showered, dressed, put perfume on myself, and I walked past the living room in my house. All of a sudden, a strange situation has stopped me. Salim was crying immensely. I wanted to know why he was crying like this. This is the really first time that he cried like this and in such a way. And I've never heard him crying since he was a baby. Of course he used to cry, but he used to ignore him. Ten years has passed and I never used to turn to him. I always tried to ignore him. But this time I could not help myself hear him crying. And especially that he was calling for his mother and she was in a different room. Then he turned away and I came close to him and said, Oh Salim, why are you crying? When he heard my voice, he stopped crying. And when he felt my closeness, he started with his little hands, feel me. And I said, what? I said to myself, I wonder what is wrong with him. Then I discovered that he was trying to push me away. As if he is saying, no, you're trying to feel me and come close to me. Where are you? for the last 10 years. Then he ran away to his room and I followed him very quickly. In the beginning he rejected to tell me the reason why he is crying. Then I tried to be nice with him. Salim, he did not tell me why he was crying until I kept on asking him. Then what I found out, the reason behind that, that his older, his brother Umar, he used to take him usually to the masjid on Friday. He was scared that he was missed the first line on a Friday. Omar, he called for Omar and he called his mother, but there was no answer. Then he started to cry. And the tears rolling down from his eyes, his blonde eyes. I could not bear the rest of his speech. I put him on my hand on his mouth. And, he said, and, 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 and I said to him, is that why you're crying, Salim? He said, yes. At this I forgot my friends. I forgot the Walima. And I said, oh Salim, don't be sad. You know who's taking you to the masjid today? He said, for sure, Omar. But he's always late. He said, no, I will take you. Salim was, was astonished and he could not believe what he was hearing. And he thought that I was mocking him and he went back to crying. Then I wiped his tears and I held his hand and I want him to put him in the car so we can drive him there. Remember he's limpy. He said, no, no, my dad, the masjid is very close. I want to walk to the masjid. He said, I want to walk to the masjid so I can get the reward. And the man said to himself, I do not remember the last time I entered the masjid. But this time was the first time I really felt fear in my heart. And the regret that I wasted so many years. The mosque was full of people. But I found a place in the first row and I said, me and Salim, we, li we listened to the khutbah. And we stood up to pray Salat al-Jumu'ah. I stu uh, uh, Salim stood next to me and he said in reality I am the one who stood next to him after the Salat Salim asked me for a Mus'haf for a Quran to read it was strange blind and he wants to read and I was trying to ignore his request but I didn't want to hear, hurt his feelings I gave him a Mus'haf then he asked me to open up to Surah Al-Kahf and ignorant me because I would open the Mus'haf, flick through the pages, through the index to find Surah Al-Kahf, finally I found it. And I gave it to him. He put it in front of him. And he started to read it and read Surah Al-Kahf while his eyes were blind. And I said to myself, Oh Allah, he has memorized Surah Al-Kahf entirely. I felt sad and I felt shy from myself and I felt a shiver through my spine and through my limbs, I asked Allah to forgive me and to guide me. 
and I start to cry like babies. I tried to hold myself back because there were a lot of people still in the masjid praying the sunnah. I was shy. I tried to hold myself, but I couldn't. All what I felt is his little hands wiping my tears, wiping my tears, and I embraced him and I hugged him. And I said to him, and I said to him and to myself, O oh my son, Salim, indeed you are not blind, I am the one who is blind. Indeed you are not the blind, I am one who is blind. I am the one who is blind. Following my friends that, let me to, that they were going to take me to fire. Following my friends that were going to take me to Jahannam. We went back to our house. And my wife was really worried. But her tears turned to happiness when she saw me in the masjid with my son. And from that day, I never missed a Friday. I left and I abandoned my evil friends. And I have a very close good friends that I met in the masjid. I tasted the sweetness of Iman. I learned from him things that kept me busy from the dunya. I've never missed Salat al-Witr, nor I missed a circle of knowledge. I used to read the Quran more than once every month. And my tongue was moist by the remembrance of Allah. I would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for my all biting and my mockery. And I felt very close to my family. I felt that this looks of fear that my wife used to have towards me it doesn't exist anymore and the smile is on her face all the time and I felt like for the first time I really own all all this dunya so I thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot and one day my friends the righteous friends decided to go on a journey for da'wah to go on a journey for da'wah to different small towns and calling people to Allah for three months. And I hesitated in the beginning. Then I made the istikhara and I asked Allah to guide me. I consulted my wife. I thought she would reject. But the opposite happened. She was very happy and she encouraged me. Because I used to travel before without even asking her. Then I left for about three months. And I used to call every time I was able to home. And how much I have missed Salim. I miss listening to his voice. And he is the one. He is the one that he never used to speak to me whilst I was traveling. Because sometimes he'd be at school. And sometimes in the masjid when I call. And when I talk to my wife on the phone. She would speak to me in happiness and excitement. Except for the last time. I didn't hear her smile as I expected. Her voice has changed. I said to her, give my salam to Salim. She said, inshallah. And she remained silent. And then finally I came back to my house. I knocked the door. I was hoping and wishing that Salim would open the door. But surprising, my son Khalid opened the door and he ran calling me, dad, dad, baba, baba. And I hugged him. But I felt something constraining my chest. I knew there is something wrong. I seek refuge in Allah from outcast Satan. And I came to my wife and I see her face change. As if she is trying to put a happy face. And I looked at her and I said, what is wrong? And then I remembered Salim. And I said, what is Salim? She put her head down and she said, with a tear down her cheek and said, Salim, Salim. And my son Khalid hasted and said, he is with Allah now. Allah took Salim. I could not bear what I've heard. I cried and I nearly fell on the floor. I nearly fell on the floor because I never expected Salim to go. A fever came to him two weeks before I arrived. Two weeks before I arrived to my home, a fever has struck him. And my wife stayed next to him for two weeks until he passed away. And Salim, the da'i, Salim, the blind boy, was able to give da'wah to a person who's older than him with a full vision. My brothers and sisters in Islam, my brothers and sisters in Islam, my brothers and sisters in Islam, it is not about having eyes. It is not about having hearing. Yes, it is about understanding. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to guide someone, no one can.
أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه Mm-hmm.